James Steinhubel, TVU on the Real Estate Channel. And today I've got Jeff Lorenz, team leader of the Lorenz Team Property Marketing Group. How are you doing, sir? I'm very well. Thanks for having me. Excellent. A nice, uh, really nice to have you. So, you know, you're um, a high level, uh, high level activity, a real estate marketing team here in uh, Sher Park in the county. COVID hits. How are you guys doing? How are you responding? Well, I mean, who would have expected, um, you know, everything to play out the way that it had. Um, but real estate was deemed an essential service, which gave us the opportunity to continue uh, marketing our product and marketing ourselves. Uh, the reality of, of the um, COVID environment that we found ourselves in is that buyers ultimately um, were told to stay home and um, it certainly reduced the activity within our marketplace uh, despite the fact that we were considered an essential service. So um, I guess the short answer is that we're, we're uh, doing everything that we can to uh, continue promoting our product. Uh, we were able to continue showing properties to buyers that um, felt comfortable enough to uh, go out into, uh, into other properties. And um, uh, if nothing else, we wish it was busier, uh, but we certainly uh, were continuing to move forward. Excellent. Now, you know, you, um, you're quite the interesting uh, uh, realtor. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you have uh, 13 years straight medallion award achiever in uh in the in this area in uh, uh 2008 you were the uh 19th uh realtor in the whole world for uh for volume and uh there was a one you know, and you've been in business for uh, for 15 years you're, you're like a, a world champion realtor right here amongst us <laughs> Well, I, I don't know about that. Sometimes well, the, the stats are the stats, right? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, back in 2008, uh, we had a, an incredible run, and that was largely because we were the sales uh, marketing team for the Center in the Park project in Sherwood Park, which uh, for anybody in our community knows that to be a staple uh, development in the, in the core of Sherwood Park. And so we were fortunate enough to uh, land a contract with Christensen Developments at the time and uh, marketed those first few buildings. So uh, that led to about $128 million worth of real estate in uh, about four or five months. And certainly that was on the tail of what was um, uh, the crazy market that we all remember in 2006, 2007. So um, that was a, a, an interesting year for sure. And um, um, you know, once you've been in the business for a while and you establish yourself and you have a system in place that works, um, you know, it, uh, sometimes the business sort of starts to take care of itself. <laughs> well, you got a pretty, you got, you got a pretty sophisticated team. T tell us, tell us about your team. Well, I mean, the way we built out our team was to have people that uh, focused on specific areas of real estate. So, um, residential real estate, while it's, kind of an easy term to throw around. There's a lot of nuances and, and niches within that, whether it be condos, uh, single family homes, uh, acreages. And so we wanted to make sure that when we were working with our customers, we had uh, an area of expertise within each of those um, silos, if you will. So that's how I built up my team. And I have uh, a member who uh, very specifically focuses on uh, the uh, rural markets. Uh, we have a satellite office out of Tofield and um, he probably has about 50% or better of the market share uh, in the rural, uh, particularly in the Toefield market. Um, another member of our team has uh, taken a keen interest in the condominium uh, market, uh, which was my, um, I guess, uh, real staple or, or entry into the, the real estate world uh, with the Christensen contract I mentioned. And uh, it's really just a matter of, of having everybody sort of own in area and uh, then we can all lean on each other. So as a team, we, we do operate a little bit differently, I think, than other teams in the sense that we really do collaborate and uh, share in each other's experience, um, successes, and, uh, and we work really well together. And your back office support, you're, you've got a, you got a full team there too? That's right, yeah. So you're, you're only as good as your paperwork, I think, a lot of the time. and. Uh, you know, real estate, unfortunately, and probably no different than many other industries, has become quite litigious. And if you don't um, really have quality paperwork, but a, but a really uh, solid system in place, 
you expose yourself, you expose your clients, and in all honesty, I believe that the, the primary um, responsibility of a realtor is to protect their client by way of uh, navigating the contracts and uh, just making sure that they're, they're not just serviced in terms of buying and selling a property, but uh, protecting them through the, uh, the actual contractual obligations of, of real estate. And that, that, uh, that leads me to um, another line of questioning. And I saw it on your, real, on, on your webpage, and it was, uh, it was very interesting, that you're actively building your team. So, it, so is this people that have no real estate experience or you're looking for current realtors? Like, how, do you, how, do you, how does someone get on a, on a team that, with a leader like you? you know, I think if you're going into business, you, you, you want to have a guy like you, right? So... Well, I mean, I'd like to think so. Uh, there are some people who are going to want to just do it their way and, and uh, will be very successful uh, on their own. Um, when I first uh, created the team at the time, it was when my dad was still in the business. And we were, I think, if not the very first, one of the very first teams probably in the country. And very shortly after that, you just started to see team after team after team. And sometimes it was just uh, individual realtors joining forces to, uh, to brand themselves. Uh, for us, um, it's, I, I guess the, the difference is that we really want to have people that, that uh, work very well with specific cohorts in the industry. So um, by growing our team, whether it be somebody who's new and, and we, uh, we teach them right from the onset of ropes or somebody who's established and just wants to have the, uh, the support of other people around them that can collaborate and can share their, uh, their experiences and uh, help you know, grow your own personal business through different marketing endeavors, et cetera. Um, I, for me, it doesn't matter if it's somebody experience versus inexperience. It's just who that person is, how they fit within our dynamic, um, what their personality is like. We're all family oriented. Everybody in my team has a university degree, so we tend to take a very analytical approach to a lot of our um, processes and how we converse with our clients and stuff. So it's just about having a good fit, I think. And, um, and then it's a win-win. And then, okay, so you're, you're someone you want, you have to or want to sell your property or you're someone that uh, you have to or want to buy property. Well, what what are we gonna? What am I, I gonna as a buyer or seller gonna experience now with Lorenz team with the co the consciousness of the time that we're in to get to get this done? Well, the the reality of our environment hasn't changed our process because our process is really about educating our clients uh, right from the onset of um, talking to us at the interview stage of, of choosing a realtor right through to when a possession happens and commissions are paid. So we created uh, a variety of uh, marketing packages uh, specific to buyers or sellers. We designed a roadmap. The roadmap identifies all those different sequential steps that uh, people will go through in the process of buying or selling. And uh, we're very particular about sitting down and having those conversations well before we even uh, put a sign on the, on the lawn or, or meet somebody in front of the house to show them. And in this way, we can set expectations. We uh, are all on the same page in terms of what the uh, process will look like. Uh, we're very clear and upfront on what the cost of service is. And um, for us, it's, uh, again, regardless of the environment that we find ourselves in right now, it's about just educating and, and taking people through a, a process that's been tried, tested, and um, um, has worked for us for, for decades. So then, can so, so you know they want to list your house or they want to interview as a realtor or buy an interview as a realtor or even go see properties can that can that be done virtually right now or is that not allowed under the real estate rules how, how does that work right so with covid um the the main uh difference i suppose is is just the um the process behind actually viewing the property or having the property shown. So we're trying to be as obviously diligent and safe as we can to protect ourselves, our customers. Um, if you're a buyer or a seller, there are health questionnaires now that are required to be signed. You only get for 24 hours. Um, in fact, I just finished booking some showings for a buyer in some places. And uh, so we filled out the questionnaire and every time I I called another realtor uh, agent to uh, to show their listing. I sent them a copy of the questionnaire so 
I see that we're in both um, even good health. We have masks. We have gloves. Um, so from the standpoint of viewing the property, we're taking obviously a number of steps just to ensure that we're protecting the people as best as we can. Um, but we're still showing properties. I've said all along that you can do a virtual open house and people can look online at pictures. Uh, in all honesty, that really hasn't changed. People had that technology uh, before uh, we were hit with this pandemic. Um, but at the same time, I've yet to find somebody who's prepared to uh, offer on a property or buy a property uh, without actually physically seeing it. Um, there's just too many nuances that go into that type of purchase beyond the scope of just a picture or, or a video tour. Um, people, you know, have a, have a feel for a home. They, they walk in and they, they, they smell, they hear, they, they do so many other things. And um, you, you need to uh, attach to all those senses before you're going to be able to put a buyer and seller together and, and have a, a mutually agreeable deal. So then you mentioned PPE, like personal protection equipment. Um, so if, is, is it supplied? Is, if I'm a buyer and I'm looking at property, do I have to bring my own? How, how does that work? So we do have uh, our gloves and masks. Um, we have them as a team as well as as a brokerage. So our brokerage um, has provided uh, boxes of gloves and uh, masks and um, hand sanitizers and wipes and all that sort of stuff. And, so my vehicle's full of them, my broker just full of them, and then when we meet our customers, we just let them know. If they have their own, we can use it, we it, not provide it for them. Um, the seller uh, has the discretion to um, decide what they want on, uh, from a buyer when you walk through a property. So they can insist on gloves or masks. Um, some don't. Um, but in every case, uh, we're at a point now where we're just sort of opening the front door Buyers, sorry, sellers are leaving lights on, leaving doors open, uh, even leaving some cupboards open and stuff. Where in the past it would all sort of be shut down and you go into a property and you'd be sort of opening things up as you go. Now we're just touching less. We're trying to keep our showings to you know 10 minutes or less, um, just reducing our, our sort of footprint on, on, on the listing. And then on the other side of the equation, because we carry a lot of inventory. We're just telling people, look, you need to be aware that a buyer that comes in may answer all the questions correctly and may take all of the necessary steps to protect uh, themselves and us. There's no guarantees, and so we just have to be uh, cognizant of that. And for that reason alone, you know, some sellers have chosen to uh, to you know suspend their listings or temporarily suspend their listings until this uh, softens. And then what about the, you know, document signings, like so signing offers and counter offers? Um, well, one of the best advancements in technology has been electronic signatures. And so our uh, board um, ha does recognize uh, uh, electronic signatures. There's two programs that are the most uh, used in our industry right now. One is called AuthentiSign. It's the one we use, and another is DocuSign. Uh, and so they authenticate people's signatures through a device, whether it be a phone, a tablet, or a computer. And we've had that long before COVID, in fact, like I said, it's something that uh, um, came along and, and actually changed our business entirely. Because, um, a lot of the stuff that we do, we want to make sure people understand what we're signing. But at the end of the day, it doesn't mean you have to drive over to their house at 10 o'clock at night to sign an offer to send it in, uh, which is the way it was when I started. <laughs> yes, yes. And, okay, so the um, going into uh, uh, COVID and now kind of, exiting and all this other kind of protocols that were put on to you and and the new kind of communication that's happening uh, anything anything that's going to carry forward you know or is you going to leave all these changes behind or anything that's going to stick with you well i think the process of just being extra diligent when you're entering into a, a seller's home i think some of these new processes will stay um in the past, I, I'm not sure everybody was perhaps as aware of, of the impact they had in the seller's home when they went through it and, and touching things that maybe they didn't need to touch. And um, COVID is, is certainly having an impact across a number of industries. For us, um, you know, the technology was already there, um, video conferencing was already here, electronics are already here. But the, the process and how you go through a home is, is perhaps going to change a little bit. Um, our team meetings are certainly changing. I mean, my guy who's in Tokyo had to drive in 
uh, once a week for a team meeting because we wanted to mandate that and, and uh, then we were forced into using Zoom as, as an option for social distancing and found it to be really effective. And uh, now we're actually meeting more frequently, uh, more on point and uh, without taking as much time, uh, reducing commute times, that sort of thing. So I think that some of those technologies will certainly be more useful moving forward. And we'll probably see people continuing to do more of the virtual open houses and stuff. Um, again, I'm not sure that a buyer is necessarily going to purchase a home without going through it physically, but uh, certainly the ability to uh, move that information through the industry will, uh, will continue as we move forward. That's very, very insightful. Thank you. So, as a as a uh, you know a top um, you know business person in uh, in our community, you know someone who's built a built a business um, you know through many times unseen adversity, but is also, uh, you know, risen to the, you know, the highest, you know, achievements uh, in, in your profession and recognized around the world. Grew, grew up here. You see, you know, most of the people around town, you, you know, and they know you. You've seen what we've gone through. From that perspective, what words of uh, you know, insight and encouragement can you share at this time? Well, I mean, I, I suppose the, the most... Um, I'm not sure if it's insightful, but if I was to share anything with, with uh, anybody, frankly, in the business community, it's, I think it's all about staying power. And I think the people that have the capacity to stay in their business, and real estate uh, is, is obviously the, the world that I know. And I've, I've seen people come and go, and it's largely because they just don't have the capacity to weather the storms and the ebbs and flows of, of the market. And while COVID has certainly had a dramatic impact on the volume of sales and, and the reduction of listings, um, you know, we've seen a lot of, of markets, uh, you know, every decade has seen uh, some type of, uh, of, uh, of an upswing in the council. And um, I think right now it's just about staying, staying the course and, and uh, don't outspend yourself. Um, make sure you have that kind of reserve for, for the downtimes. And uh, if you're if you're in it and uh, things turn around, that's typically when you see some pretty good upswings in the market as well. I think as things relax a little bit and people start to have some confidence in the marketplace, the, the people who have been able to weather the storm are going to see uh, uh, an influx of, of opportunity in business. When that happens, I'm not sure yet, but uh, I, I believe it's to come. Uh, historically speaking, they said coming out of a pandemic, you typically see almost like a hyperinflationary market because people are, are ready to spend their money and, and get out and do things. So uh, whether or not it's quite like that this time around, I don't know, but I think you will see uh, an uptick and it be pretty aggressive. So for us, we're just we're kind of hanging on. Um, business hasn't come to a full stop, but it's definitely slowed. And I think that when we start to see that confidence back, uh, you'll see a, a big increase in sales. And, and, and if I may summarize you, it's uh, sort of the last call for buy low. Uh, Jeff Lorenz, uh, team leader of the Lorenz Team Property Marketing Group. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. Bye now.